I'm Madison Mills. This is Bloomberg Quick Take. The Golden Globe Awards are back, whether Hollywood likes it or not. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association announced the nominees today for the annual ceremony celebrating the best work in film and TV. But this comes after a scandal-filled year. The organization has come under fire for lacking diverse membership and was also criticized for ethical lapses in the way it conducted business. The group committed to a series of reforms and has added a chief diversity officer who joins us now. Neil Phillips, welcome to Quick Take and thank you so much for joining us today. Let's jump right in. As you know, after a report from the LA Times showed that the HFPA had zero black voters, we've seen a lot of examples of Hollywood rebuffing the organization as a whole. What actionable changes have you seen the HFPA make since then to address the diversity issues within the organization? Yeah, well, thank you for that question, Maddie. I've seen so many changes. Um, you know, one of them includes uh, adding black members, uh, which was um, an oversight, um, a transgression, and uh, the criticism that the organization received for that um, was was justified. Um, and they have they've made a course correction. Um, in addition to adding black members. Um, they have really made a significant number of changes that speak to, um, that really get to the structure, uh, the structural operation of the organization that includes uh, governance, um, membership criteria, um, uh, outreach for members, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion training, uh, the addition um, of my role, which is an executive position with the organization, uh, so uh, not only have they addressed the immediate issue at hand by adding um, some number of black members, and there will be more, um, but they've also gone deeper than that, which is really necessary for organizations to do if they are committed to lasting and sustained change in these areas. Neil, I'm so glad you bring up the number of black members because, as you know, HFPA announced that they have their largest and most diverse class ever with 21 new members. But the organization itself says that it didn't meet its goal of black membership at 13 percent, landing at only six black members. What is the plan to meet that 13 percent goal moving forward? Well, that, that goal was established uh, prior to my arrival. And, um, you know, I think the numbers are obviously really, really important. And the number um, of Black members uh, is really important. But the story and the effort can't stop uh, with numbers. Um, you know, one of the responses to your question is, well, we're going to add Black, uh, black journalists to be members. We're going to continue to add more. So that number is going to increase, and that's going to happen in the coming weeks and months. Um, that, that's for sure. Uh, but this is beyond the numbers. It's actually unfair um, to, um, to, to, to classify or to regard uh, the new Black members or any members uh, purely as numbers. Uh, these are highly capable professionals who are going to um, enhance uh, and augment the work uh, of the HFPA. Uh, and the entire entertainment industry is going to benefit from their professionalism and their capability. So they're more than numbers. Uh, certainly, we're focused on numbers, but uh, this is this goes beyond uh, how many black members there are. Sure. In, in terms of the nomination ceremony itself, I want to get your take on that because Gabrielle Union turned down the offer to present the nominations. HFPA landed on Snoop Dogg, but it, it does seem like the latest example of Hollywood not necessarily being ready to embrace HFPA. What is the organization going to do to repair those relationships with key members of Hollywood that it really needs to, to continue to thrive? Well, all I can tell you, Maddie, is um, HFBA is just going to continue to do the work. Um, that's what this is all about, is you have to do the work. And there are people who are critics, uh, have been critics, who will um, look at the HFPA and the work that have been done and will say, okay, I applaud those efforts and I believe those efforts are authentic and sincere. And um, it's time to uh, allow the HFPA um, to transform and to get back to work. And then there are those who won't um, afford that grace. And that's not our decision. Um, it really isn't. What, what, what's in our hands, what we can control is the work that we do and the, um, the dedication with which we do it. And uh, the last several months uh, have been about work, have been about change, and um, we'll continue to do that. And the folks who come on board uh, will be thrilled because they're going to find an organization that is deeply committed to transforming. Uh, and I really believe uh, that 
you know, our nation's path to growth in this area around diversity, equity, inclusion. <clears throat> it, it needs to call out organizations who are misstepping, who are falling short, uh, and it needs to leave a path for individuals and organizations to demonstrate uh, that they've learned, that they're ready to transform and ready to grow. So uh, we're just gonna focus on the work. And of course, this is happening not just with the HFPA. This is a global issue, and it's happening a lot in the business world that we, of course, cover here at Bloomberg all the time. Some of the change that you mentioned really mirrors what we've seen in terms of organizations and a slew of companies hiring diversity and inclusion officers in response to calls to do better. But the critique from a lot of employees is that that sort of feels like a Band-Aid on top of a massive wound. One could assert that the HFPA is doing the same thing, right? What, what would your response to that be? Well, I, I think my response is, is that I don't know um, what else there is to do. If it feels like a Band-Aid, um, then, then I think we're in real trouble because um, where there is significant effort and really meaningful change that has been thoughtful, um, that has been deliberate, um, we've got to allow for those changes to, to have their desired effect. And if there's skepticism around those kinds of things and um, whether or not it feels like a Band-Aid or window dressing, I mean, uh, as I said before, this is about the work and the work is not quick. Um, the work is not about just adding a few members here or hiring a few people there and then all of a sudden it's fixed. Um, so maybe maybe this early phase of things um, will always feel like a Band-Aid. I just don't know how to respond to that other than to say this is work for the long term. Um, and yes, there need to be sort of immediate changes, and immediate tangible uh, results. And in addition to those, there need to be uh, demonstrations that this work is to be sus sustainable and transformational, which takes time. Of course. And I know, as you know, NBC won't be broadcasting this. Uh, Netflix, Amazon, other streaming giants cut ties with HFPA, or HFPA rather. I know that you can't tell me where this is going to be streaming or, or b break any big news like that here. But I am curious, what role do you think the ceremony itself holds in the future of our entertainment industry, given the, the lack of clarity about how people are going to be able to view it? What does the future of this ceremony ceremony look like in terms of its impact? Yeah, well, you're right. I can't reveal any details, and there are many of them that I don't know. Um, but what I will say is it's important that the HFPA um, get on with its business, um, which is to recognize excellence uh, in entertainment and film and television in particular. Uh, this is an organization that has been um, doing this for you know, 78 years and has played an immense role in fueling the popularity of this uh, industry of impact. And uh, it needs to continue doing that, particularly in light of the fact that it is doing the work um, to uh, address the issues uh, to which it was called to task for. Mm -hmm. So it needs to continue doing that. And, you know, the other piece of this, um, which doesn't get talked about often, you know, close to uh, $50 million of philanthropy have resulted from the HFPA's work over the years, and that's benefited uh, individual creatives, it's benefited communities, organizations, certainly the industry uh, at large. Um, that's just a lot of good giving with significant impact, both measurable and immeasurable. Uh, that's really important. And, you know, our, our entire world has gone through, um, you know, two years of uh, pandemic ravaged uh, disruption. And, uh, you know, wherever we can find normalcy uh, with organizations of impact, particularly those who are doing good work and transforming in the ways that are necessary, uh, we need to get back to doing that. Mm -hmm. Neil Phillips, really appreciate you joining us and answering those questions. Thank you so much. That was Neil Phillips, Chief Diversity Officer for the Hollywood Foreign Press Association.